may not have heard that Travis Scott and Tory Lanez previously had a little bit of beef, a little bit of an altercation go on between two of them. In Meek Mill's Dream Chaser 4 album, there's a song called Liddy. In this song, Tory Lanez had a feature. In the feature, um, fans believed that he sounded a lot like Travis Scott, right? So they immediately took to Twitter and started bashing Tory Lanez, kind of just saying that he needed to find his own sound and stop stealing Travis Scott's sound. Um, the way that Tory Lanez handled this was he tweeted pretty much that he can't steal someone's sound that he wrote for. So Travis felt disrespected by this and the way he handled it was going and confronting Tory Lanez about it. Now Tori also spoke about this on his Memories Don't Die album. I believe the song was Hate to Say. Here's a little clip of the song. And Travis Scott almost fought at the Malaluna. We both agreed shortly after that it was music we possibly could be doing that's bigger than trying to ruin it. So my apologies, just forgive me for doing it. Also, I did some digging and I found an interview of Tory Lanez talking about the incident. Here it is now. There was this shit, I guess it came out and I had said some shit just about like things that I had previously written. And um, there was a song Travis Scott had did that I had wrote, wrote, wrote the hook for. And I don't think he even, like now that I know the situation behind it, I don't think he even like meant to really do the song. He just kind of was trying to help somebody out. And like they were just like, can you please just do this hook? And he didn't even know it was me at the time. And I was telling y'all that I had wrote the record or whatever, and then they put it out and spun it. I guess whoever it was was just like, yo, you know, Tory Lane says he ghost writes for Travis Scott, da 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 And boom, you know, we get into this, uh, this whole thing, and I, I think around the time Liddy came out, um, people was like, yo, you know, um, I think it was Charlemagne, or somebody said like, yo, you sound like Travis Scott on the Liddy record. And a lot of people were saying, you sound like this nigga. And they were saying, like, I sounded like Fetty Wap and, like, a lot of a whole bunch of other people, like, on my album and stuff. And I remember just saying, like, yo, like, I can't sound like anybody that I wrote for. Period, point blank. Like, and I wrote for a lot of people. You dig what I'm saying? So when I said that, um, whatever the case is, I guess he took it away. And boom, uh, we had Malaluna, the festival. We had it together. I just get off stage. You know, um, I'm in the room. And, uh... We was, uh, we was just in like a little spot, whatever the case is, we was in a little position. And I'm sitting there, I'm talking to uh, my, my, my dog, he's sitting in the room and Travis busts in the room. Yo, come talk to me, blood, da 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 da. Come talk to me outside. I said, I was gonna talk to him, but then I felt like he was being a little too disrespectful. So I, I didn't talk to him outside. I told his man to bring him back inside. He, he was kind of upset about the situation because he thought I was specifically talking to him on a tweet that I had tweeted about when I was like, I can't sound like nobody I wrote for. But meanwhile, I'm talking about a bunch of cats. Like, I wrote for a lot of niggas, like, and, you know, whatever our situation happens. And I just, like, just debrief it up, whatever happens. He came in there and he was, he was charged up and I was charged up. And it came to a point where I was just like, yo, my nigga, like, let's fade it out. Let's just fade it out. Let's just, let's, let's fade it out. And I, I think that originally when he came in there, his whole, his, he, the plan was never for us to be faded in the first place. It was just like, nigga, what the fuck? I think his plan was to just be like, yo, my nigga, like, what the fuck are you doing? Which I, I completely understand, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, like, I kind of, I, I get it from his standpoint. It's like, people are going to take it this way, so why even say it, you know what I'm saying? But in the moment, I never really looked at it like that, you know what I'm saying? But now looking back at it, of course, like, after we solved the problem, whatever, but boom, so in this moment, like, it just, I don't think he was really, like, trying to really fade me like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, 
I, I think I just kind of took it a little overboard, and I and like always looking back at the situation, like cause Travis Scott's really like an artist I really enjoy listening to. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it kind of was like, damn, like I feel bad about the situation. Like, damn, like I really try to like fight like a nigga that I really be listening to. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's just like, yo, my so on the album I said my apologies for you know what I'm saying for the situation. That's all it is, you know what I'm saying? Originally, I think that Tory Lanez acted on emotion and kind of didn't act the level head at first. Later, however, I believe he kind of had a chance to think about it, also talked to Travis about the situation, and I respect the way that he handled it moving forward. Uh, you can tell that, you know, it's just, we're all humans. You gotta remember these guys are humans too. They have egos and sometimes those egos clash, right? It's not always gonna be bread and butter. If you guys enjoy watching, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Smack that subscribe button because we are the best to do it on the platform. Come on now. I got content coming to you every single week. Much love guys. Bow, bow, bow.